Hey. 
Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank this you. Is, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Repeat after me. I will give peace. I will give you peace. I will give you love. I will give you love. Oh, I will give you love. I will give you love. I see your beauty. I see your beauty. I hear your needs. I hear your needs. I feel your feelings. I feel your feelings. My wisdom comes from a higher source. My wisdom comes from a higher source. I salute that source in you. Let us work together. Let us work together. Okay, open your arms, close your eyes, take a deep breath. Establish myself this night. I establish myself this night in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the power of the Holy Spirit. I commit myself. I commit myself for the light to work through me. For the light to work through me by the bond of our friendship. And the power of love. May this body be consecrated as a station of light. Put your hands on your heart. Breathe in this love into your heart. Let a smile come to your lips and send it out to the children on this planet right now. Breathe into your heart. Let a smile on your lips. You have to have the smile. And breathe it out to this world in this holiday of light. Breathe into your heart. Let this love flow right through you and send it out to the children on this planet. You know, for those of you who get my newsletter, I was doing that big smiling Buddha exercise, you know, that great martial arts exercise that the Tai Chi people do that builds your, your immune system and cures illnesses and, and gets you really powerful. But we're going to do a variation on the theme tonight. This time, when you hold, you know, we had you all hugging a tree, this time you're going to hug the earth. And the earth is going to be in your arms, and the earth is going to be leaning up right against your heart. And remember, you have to smile through this whole exercise. Now, the, the sensei that taught us this, actually the Sifu that taught us this, they wanted us to do an hour of this a day. They didn't have the smile. I added the smile for them. So, But it was for martial arts purposes, you know, but we are making it into the open heart purposes. And so you're going to stand just like this. Maybe you can bend your knees just a little so your back is straight. And you're going to hug this earth with all of your heart and all of your soul. You're going to embrace this earth in your bosom as if you were the healing hands of Christ. Now make your body empty because your wholeness comes from being empty. You connect with the spirit when you empty yourself. 
Keep smiling. Hug this earth. And you know if Hilda was here, she'd have this whole signal. He's got the whole world in his hands. But she did that. So hug this earth. Send this love. Send your love into this earth. Keep your smile. the drop. So if you do this five minutes every day, you'll open your heart, your hands will become hands of light, and if you hug the planet, then the planet will get a big dispensation, and it comes through you, not from you. It's good. Let's do one chakra opening exercise. In. This seat over here, if you like. We do hamsa, all right? Fourth chakra exercise. Hamsa. You raise the chi inside your body. Hum opens up, you know, oma hum. Hum, hum. Opens up the fourth chakra. Here we go. Take a deep breath. Breathe into your heart. Push the energy up your spine, out the top of your head. Breathe into your heart. Push it up your spine, out the top of your head. Once more, breathe into your heart. Push it up your spine. Open your kundalini. Wonderful. Hands down. Have a seat. <laughs> three days call me and everybody has a song on from God. <laughs> I want to do um, a solo. I want to do Brother, Son, Sister Moon because the last class that Hilda gave at William Patterson University, she had us do um, Brother, Son, Sister Moon and she had me do it solo and the whole time she was invoking the spirit. And you know, we carry all of our ancestors with us. You've heard me say this. I wrote about this as well. And, and the mediums always say that they're always waiting to talk to us from the other side. Um, everybody has a message. They want to get a message across. This class has had so many wonderful, wonderful people that have touched the earth and have gone off to the other side and they're all looking in tonight and it's kind of our theme tonight if i got here early i was going to do the an invocation and we do a little one right now but i want to tell you that your teacher hilda 
is has all of her contingent on the other side tuning in with this. And Al said something funny last night. He said, he said, you know, I don't know how many people we're gonna get. He said, but I said, but Al, there's always gonna be more people on the other side hooking up with us than he's even in this room. So even if there's 10 people, it's gonna be a thousand and ten people. And we're not gonna have lightweights. We're gonna have Ram Surat Kumar and Amal. <laughs> And Baba, and I mean, it's just an amazing contingent because Hilda created an amazing group of friends that are all connecting with us. Now, I want to say that Hilda used to tell us when the energy was too great for people to handle, they would begin coughing or sneezing or scratching or getting uncomfortable. They would they would be moving and fidgeting and they couldn't handle the chi, the energy. However, we're going to have a, a full dose tonight. And I don't care if you scratch. <laughs> because it's time for them to be able to, to send the dispensation down. And they all wait for this. It's not just us that wait for these meetings. It's, it's all of our friends on the other side, the Jones and Ingrid's and, and Will's and, and Freddie's. And, and I want you to be thinking of all of the people that were part of this class over all these many years that have gone on to the other side because they're all in this class still. And it's being conducted. It's much bigger than us. We're, we're just nothing. <laughs> nothing in comparison to what's connecting with us tonight. And so I want you to pay attention to the fact that the door to the world, the door to the other side is open. Every time you open it, every time that you pray, every time that you meditate, but in particular, any time that there's fellowship, when a group of people get together, particularly a group like this that Hilda devoted her entire life to, to you kids, and she never took a dime. She never took a penny. She was divine. And that's our lineage, and we're, we're very lucky because of that. So I want you to be cognizant of the fact that there's a lot of folks tuning in and counting on you to be able to hold the power, to hold the energy, that you don't fall apart tomorrow and get angry and upset and whine and and all the, the nonsense of people who took on too much juice, right? Hold the power. Hold your center. Hold your tongue. Right? K-Y-M-B-C, is that it? Keep your big mouth closed. <laughs> shut. Keep your big mouth shut. That was Hilda's mantra for us. You know, hold the power. Hold the energy. So I'm going to sing Brother, Sun, Sister, Moon, and I'm going to allow them to fill you with light. And I want you first to take for yourself and get healthy. Then I want you to send it to every single person in your world to bless everybody that you can think of. Your families, your jobs, wherever it is, see light going out and then send it to all the dark places on the world because Hilda would have this meeting and she would never miss an opportunity to do work for the planet. When you got more than one Hilda person together, work for the planet. Use your prayers, use your intention, use your power, use your love. Most importantly, use your love. There you go. Breathe into your heart. Breathe up your spine out the top of your head. On every breath, breathe this divine dispensation. Be touched this night. If you come for a miracle, get it. Open your heart. And allow them to touch it this night. Be touched. Let the two worlds join in one unbroken circle, which wherever you go, you always return to the Holy Spirit. Feel it. Believe, believe, believe in a miracle this night.
I'd like to ask Rita to talk tonight a little bit because she was telling me such amazing stories the other day. And I wanted her to share a little bit with you. He said to prepare. So, you know, I'm a good student, so I went around gathering books and trying to read and trying to figure out what I was going to talk about. <laughs> and then Beth went, why are you going to read someone else's stuff? When Hilda gave it all. She gave us the courage to go inside and know that all that we ever need to know is there. So, Larry wanted me to talk about the connection between the two worlds. It all began with Hilda. She was helping me with a friend who was passing. And she said to me, well, darling, go over there now and help her pass over. Tell her this world is just an illusion. Tell her that the real world is awaiting. So I thought, oh, that takes a lot of guts to go tell somebody, go, go on, go on to the other world. It's more beautiful there. And I thought, what if she says to me, why don't you go if it's so good? <laughs> All the way over, I kept singing, and they set it all up. They set it up. Her family was just leaving as I walked in at the, in the hospital room. I went over to her. I didn't know what to say. Her face was all wrinkled up. She was in pain. Her mouth was dry. I thought, oh, God, what do I say? Hilda, you said, tell her to go over. She's in so much pain. How can I just willy-nilly say, go on over? Well, I went over and I held her hand and I put some, you know, remember when they used to have those dabs they put on their mouths? I did a little bit of that. And I started talking to her. It wasn't Rita talking. Because in the talk, it was all about how joyful the people around her had been for knowing her and how happy they were that she'd been in their lives. And it went on and on like that. And then all of a sudden, like someone turned the button off, I was quiet. Her name was Maureen. And I said, to her, Maureen, I, I guess I better go. But now her face had changed. She had become so vibrant, so beautiful. And I thought, this is what we call death. I had an idea, it was morose. I, I thought death was scary and horrible. But here I saw this woman's face transform into this angelic being. And I said to her, Maureen, I, I think I'm gonna go now. She said, no, Rita, not yet. So I just held her hand because they turned me, they, the, the recording off. The next morning, her family called. She had peacefully passed. But for me, my life and my thought about death totally changed. <coughs> I saw the beauty in death, and I remembered Hilda's words. She would always say, kids, it's not a death. It's just a change of address. Or she would say, it's their birth into heaven. Well, the other thing that Hilda really prepared me for was that a few years later, I started losing one family member after another, after another, after another. And yes, there is such a connection. There's such a connection. My husband and I had talked about it. We said, let's signal each other. We did. We did. He would come in my dreams and he would tell me things and they were lucid dreams. He told me things, but it wasn't verbal. 
it was all from here to there he was beautiful each time i asked him what's heaven like he had come down and he said honey i'm not going to be around the earth plane much anymore do you see i want you to get this picture they hang around but they have things to do too so he said honey i'm, I'm not going to be around the earth plane much anymore i said oh honey where are you going he said they said i'm going to another plane and i said but how is it over there he said it's so beautiful but where i'm going is going to be even more beautiful i said but i want to know he said i will come to tell you do you see the beauty we can't see but they are here they're here or the experience I had with my mother. She was what they call vegetative at that point. And she was about to pass. And I made it always held in the back of my mind. Celebrate, celebrate their birth into heaven. It gives you such courage when now you're doing it for them. You're not doing it for yourself. Or when those tears come, they can come. You can express them. But then I would say, am I crying for me or am I crying for them? I'm crying for me. And I would boo-hoo anyway. And I would talk to them and say, sorry, I'm crying, but I have to. So anyway, back to my mother. She was, I stayed with her, that it was about a week worth. I stayed with her and this one night she started gurgling. So I said to the nurse, I've never experienced this, but I never lost courage. Hilda was my courage. She was always with me. So I said, is this what they call a death rattle? She said, yes, dear. She's going to die any minute now. And all of a sudden I remembered. My aunts were coming in from Canada to say goodbye to their sister. And I thought, oh no. I said, Mom, I know you hear me. I know you understand me, but your sisters are coming tomorrow. You have to stay one more day, please. You see, I had already let her go. It was her time. It was her time. It, was, it wouldn't be fair to keep on hanging on. She'd just be suffering in the body. She wanted to be free, and she, oh, well, my mother, when she went over, she, she blew up, and she didn't show up for a while, because she, she had her freedom finally. Do you know, she went right back to normal breathing, and then she waited one more day. Her sister came. She loved the rosary, and they prayed the rosary with her, not with her, but around her by the way with the other thing I did and I'm just giving you ideas because death can be the most beautiful thing my daughter and I filled the room with flowers and 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 then we played very soft gentle music and people would come in and say feel so good here of course the angels had come to take my mother's soul with, to show her the way. So I could tell you at least another 20 stories like that. <laughs> <Two more. laughs> well, there's another one. My brother passed away. As I told you, it was one after another after another. My brother passed away and he pretty much knew the day. He said, I'm going back into the hospital, but I think this is my last trip. And they were going to, um, what do you call that? Expirate his blood, his lungs. He's full of water. And they were debating whether or not, but he was, he was out. This is the other thing, how children are used. So my little niece said, Aunt Rita, I have to talk to you. I said, okay. We were all around my brother now, trying to make a decision if we um, did the lung procedure or not. She said, I have to talk to you. So she brought me into another room, eight years old. 
She said, please, don't do anything more to my dad. Let him go. My brother had given her the message to tell me because I was hanging on to him. He said, let him go. I said, sweetie, I promise. I let him go. And then my husband came walking in. And when he walked in, he said, your brother just left. I had to be taken out of the room because I was hanging on to him. But my husband said, you know, honey, if you'd been there, it was so beautiful. He said his hand reached up and he said, I never saw a smile as broad as his smile. That's how perfect it was. That's how he's going over. He'd gone through all the suffering, but now he was, someone had come and he reached and they were taking him up. And he came later in my dream. That's the other, they connect in the dreams. So pay attention to them. That's a, another way of doing it. Or they come in thought form. You know, you think it's your idea, They've been giving me recipes and <laughs> it's amazing. So my brother came and we were in this room. It looked like a kitchen, but not a kitchen. You know, we like food, us Italians. So <laughs> he's in there and it's this kitchen. It's white, but it's not sterile white. And he's eating bread, you know, like Italian bread with all rainbow colors in it and he said you know you were worried about me not going to church enough he said but they never closed heaven's gate to me isn't that a nice message that's enough <laughs> next time thank you so much this is my son When his grandfather was, was um, in the hospital dying of uh, cancer, um, he was a very devout religious man. And he was, he was one of the most amazing and beautiful men I have ever met. And he would have me come in and he'd say, read to me. And I'd read him scriptural things, spiritual things. And then he stopped me one, one day, he put his, hand up to my mouth because he can hardly talk and he, and he went and I said you see the other world and then this smile came up on his face and when he passed he passed with a smile on his face and the doctors it was in Columbia Press and they all came they, they said did you go to room 212 to see to see that man that special man because the energy in there the light that was in that room was remarkable and I remember when Joe, uh, uh, Joe's wife, Joe Rafolo's wife passed away, Hilda went to that funeral. Who was there? Do you remember the whole story? I mean, because, because Joe was, was crying and Hilda was sitting next to Joe and then there was an empty seat where his, uh, Joe's wife, who had passed on, was sitting. And, and she was talking to Joe's wife the entire time that the service was going on and she's having a full conversation and you know Hilda was just an incredible, incredible person and Joe's wife says, um, he never was able to hear me. She says, I've been trying to talk to him and tell him that I'm here, I'm sitting right next to you and you're in your own world crying and, and it was like this back and forth conversation and I remember Hilda talking about that because she made us all read, in the last years of her life, she made us all read a book called After the Change Called Death. And it was a book about a woman who passes and, and then she comes back and she tells the whole story of what happened. And Hilda wanted everybody to, to be unafraid that the two worlds are very close at all times and that if you just would connect a little bit more and a little less of yourself, your small self, and got into your bigger self, you would, would experience that because we do carry our families, our loved ones, our ancestors travel along with us until at least we light enough candles to send them off, you know, go away, that kind of a thing. But 
that's our theme tonight. I'm going to have Elizabeth come down and, and tell you a couple of stories too, Elizabeth. I'm so happy to be here tonight, so glad to see you. <laughs> and um, uh, I just, I just, I have such a feeling here tonight, like everyone, everyone looks so beautiful tonight. I don't know what, I mean, you're always beautiful, but I, I just, it just feels, I had to come tonight, and I didn't think I could come tonight, because I didn't think I could stop coughing. I, I sent Larry an email yesterday, and the subject was, oi. <laughs> I've been coughing since, for a week, and, you know, a couple of hours sleep a night and all that stuff, so I thought, oh my God. Uh, but, okay, I'll come, but I surely can't sing. Uh, and you can hear on the baritone. But uh, I have lots of, I have um, going to the other side stories too, but I was thinking, I, I just, since our theme is children of light, and we are here to be light. Yes, you sang the song. Yes. And, <laughs> and, um, I was thinking, just today I had this thought about this, um, I did a cable show here in New York. Um, I did, like, we did it for a year and a half. And it was called Love is the Power. And um, it was a half hour show and, you know, it was really fun to do. And during that time, I had this thought. And I, at one point, I encouraged my audience to join me in becoming a member of L.A. And <laughs> L.A. was something, a sort of a, an etheric club that I had designed that, was, that stood for Lovers Anonymous. And I was beseeching my audience to decide to become a lover. And everybody said, oh, you better watch out talking like that. But I said, oh, please, anybody that knows me knows what I'm talking about. And I'm gonna trip and fall on my nose in a minute. <laughs> and so I thought I've got to I've got to bring that up tonight to for you all to give your hearts um, permission to become members of LA and to be an anonymous lover wherever you go wherever whatever you're doing wherever you go you are love and you are light therefore <laughs> so I offer that to you become a member of LA Lovers Anonymous okay I mean, there's so many anonymouses and this is good Lovers Anonymous is the best <clears throat> and then I was thinking that was sort of led me into something I was thinking about a couple of weeks ago and that was allowing ourselves to be deliciously happy. And I went, you know, you don't hear those two words together very often, do you? Deliciously happy? What am I talking about? <laughs> but, it's, but it's right in line with what I talk about um, in my Better and Better series, about, about being willing to make a commitment to feeling really good. I mean, feeling really good. Allowing ourselves to get up and go through our day, every day, feeling good. I mean, I, I feel that it's not only our birthright to feel good, it is our responsibility. We are here to be a blessing to our world. That's why we're here. I mean, we all have been so blessed with the teachings. And, you know, it's payback time. We are, and there is so much, you know, so much uh, raucousness out there. And we are here to be the calm, love, light, tender, kindness, just deliciousness. That's what I, delicious, deliciously happy. And that made me think, <laughs> and that made me think of um, the, the words of Marianne Williamson that Nelson Mandela said at his inauguration in 1994. And I've said it here a couple of times, but it bears repeating. Um, 
<coughs> I would like to just walk around the streets and give everybody a copy of this. I usually have copies with me, but I was so out to lunch, I didn't. I, brought, I barely got myself here tonight. But, but Marianne's words, and Nelson said them at that time, were, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that, is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Do you hear that? It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be beautiful, fabulous, talented, gorgeous? <coughs> Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small doesn't serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel threatened by you. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we automatically give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our fears, our presence automatically liberates others. Radiantly happy, deliciously happy, L.A. members of the L.A. club. No dues, no membership, no monthly meetings. Just sign your heart up. Um, there was something that touched me very deeply uh, right after 9-11, something that I read somewhere, I don't remember where, but it was a guy uh, that was a member of the New York City Ballet. His name was Ryan Kelly. And he wrote, I'm trying to breathe peace more than ever this year, like rainforests that oxygenate the earth. Peace breathers might pacify the planet. So as we are being anonymous lovers, we can be peace breathers too. I wish you all the most glorious Christmas holiday season and may the new year bless us with such delicious happiness and abundance, and beauty, and love and kindness and deliciousness. Yes. And next time I'm going to sing, by gum and by golly. <laughs>
truth is we can only take ourselves so far and then the Holy Spirit's got to do it for us. But we got to take ourselves so far. And part of the taking ourselves is to fully bring ourselves to presence. And nothing does that like just chanting, singing, bringing that vibration in with your body. So these words are very simple. I'll take you through them, but I just want you to understand what they mean. And they were from the fifth guru of the Sikh tradition many, many hundreds of years ago. I bow, pranams, and first I want to pranam to Hilda for allowing me to be here. I bow to the, to the primal guru. Who is the primal guru? The self. I bow to the truth that has existed throughout the ages. I bow to the one true wisdom, that great divine wisdom, which is within us all. Most of the tune. Ad Bure Name. Say that with me. Ad Bure Name. That's the first line. And then just the first word changes. So I'll take you through it and then we'll chant it a bunch of times. Ad Bure Name.
So it's always obvious coming here that there's nothing to do because the feel in the room, everyone's so tuned in. It's just amazingly blissful in here. You can feel your whole energy system, your consciousness system, just wide open without doing anything. It's just right here, right now. I was thinking about what it means to connect to the spiritual side, the other side, and the element in us that connects to the spiritual side is, is energy. Energy exists in our physical being, but it also exists in our spiritual side. So it's that connector that lives in both energy is light, Energy is sound, energy is vibration. You feel that when you walk in and you feel this room, you could feel a vibration right now in the middle of your chest. You could feel that, you know? It's, we're living, we're feeling both our physical world and our spiritual world at this very moment. So I'd like to just go a little deeper into that sensation of energy and open up our consciousness line a little more. And we could feel energy, we could use key energy as a conduit. So just we could rub our hands a little bit, we're going to use our palms to start feeling energy, make our palms warm, and rub our hands as if we're washing them. <laughs> and then we could just tap the tips of our fingers together. Yeah. Yeah. And then if we stop and put our hands in front of our chest and just feel our palms. It might start subtly at first, and you might feel a sense of warmth starting to happen, or a sense of vibration, tingling. It has many forms. Just start to become aware, focusing. You know, where our mind goes, energy goes. So that's how our meditation kind of focuses us and brings us in. So just being aware of the sensation in the palms and bring them closer and further apart. Just very slowly. You might feel pressure. It might feel like the palms are pushing or pulling. Away. Yeah, just very slowly, very closely. As we do this, relaxing the wrists, relaxing the arms, getting our arms to zero gravity. something, there's something there. If you haven't felt key energy before. Some of you feel it very strongly. It's something you've done many times before. And with our eyes closed, to begin to move out to the side very slowly. Very slowly our palms begin to move upward, moving overhead. Begin to feel the energy point at the very top of our head. 
slowly sweeping down, being aware of that energy point between our eyebrows. Everyone in this room is so aware. Feeling the sensation, the energy point at the base of the throat. As we sweep down slowly the center of the chest. Solar plexus. The middle, the lower abdomen base of the torso and imagining it just begins to flow down the legs. You might feel tingling in your legs at the bottom of your feet. The palms slowly begin to move upward again. Moving very slowly, feeling that energy point at the very top of the head. Moving to the center of the brain now, flowing in like liquid honey. Yeah. You're opening up your chakra system, base of the throat, the center of the chest, solar plexus, base of the bottom of the lower abdomen, base of the torso. This time our hands begin to float up, imagining a beautiful violet lotus beginning to bloom on the top of our head, but we feel this little warm tickling at the very top of our head. We see this beautiful lotus blooming at the top of our head. Slowly, the sun above our hands down the roots begin to grow and travel down bringing that beautiful energy down our chakra line down our consciousness line to the base of our throat you feel it the center of the chest coming through to the solar plexus the lower abdomen Nourishing that lotus, that lotus coming with its roots, feeding that energy line. The palms begin to face outward in front of the, in front of the forehead now. third eye and imagining a bright sun, <coughs> imagining that bright sun begins to fill, open up the third eye, yes, pure healing spiritual energy coming. energy to the first person that comes to mind. That person needs this energy. Send it out. You could feel your heart opening right now. You feel it. It's a sensation. Notice that sensation. You're sending that 
beautiful healing heart energy to somebody. They need it right now. You're giving it to them. You're giving them. You're receiving it. It's not yours. Just sit. Be the conduit. You can feel health is like. Slowly sweeping down the face, throat, chest, abdomen. Sweeping again. One more time. With the right hand, sweeping down without touching the left arm, using the sensation of energy. A little cold in here, though. Sometimes hard to feel that. Sweeping again. Sweeping again. Rubbing our palms together, coming back, rubbing our face. We say, I love my beautiful face. I don't think you say, I love my beautiful face. And say, I love your beautiful face. I love your beautiful face. I love your beautiful face. Beautiful face, it's all our face. Sweeping back. Sweeping down, everyone, wow, the energy in here is so beautiful. The connection here is so beautiful. Thank you. I, ne I never went to a, a medium. Of course, there's an awful lot of natural mediums all around this class. People who bring through the most amazing things, the words that are divinely inspired and and for all those years, the 13 years that I sat at Hilda's feet, it was like you couldn't get a better medium than that because she was bringing none of herself. She was bringing the Holy Spirit through. And it was pure. And it was wonderful. But my Kathy runs a um, facility called the Terra Sky Center in Summit. And they had a lady on a Sunday that was giving a presentation. She was a medium and she was giving a presentation. And I happened to be doing a, a massage treatment that morning. So I decided to stay and see what she had to say. And what she said was that our ancestors follow us around. And whenever a medium is going to do a presentation, they kind of line up on the other side to connect and to send messages down. And sometimes the message is not even for you, it's for your next door neighbor, but because you have access to the next door neighbor. So what she, she, she was going through this whole thing about how they're very excited to connect because everybody wants to tell you that they arrive safely and everything is a okay and stop worrying about things and, and so forth. Well, in that same week, one of my uh, clients came in and she said that I'm sponsoring this meeting with these two famous mediums and it's a small little thing. It's going to be like 20 people and I want you to come. So Kathy and myself went and, and we're sitting there and she says, I'm getting a message from this side of the room. And she says, now this is how it works. If there's something that I'm saying that you, that can relate to you, that connects to you, give me, you know, raise your hand and give me one of those okays, you know, that I can then explore it with you because I'm just getting impressions from the other side. And she explained how they hear and, and how they feel and how they see. Well, so she says, there's two ladies on the other side. One of them is older and one of them is younger. And the younger one is very shy and they're giddy and they're laughing and giggling. And she said, and the older one, I'm hearing the name Jean. 
Does anybody over here have it? Does that make any sense to anybody? So Kathy raises her hand because Kathy's mother was Jean. And so she says, okay. Now the younger of the two seems to have been on the other side only for a short period of time. And she passed away and she says, oh, it looks like she had cancer. And she said, breast cancer. And Kathy's um, brother's wife passed away from breast cancer a couple years ago. And the message was, please tell Bob, which is Kathy's brother, to cool it. <laughs> lighten up, I'm sorry. Please tell Bob to lighten up. This woman had the names of all these people, right? So it was kind of like bona fide. And, and then she had all these messages to give. And that was like, wow, that was pretty good. So the evening goes on and they're doing other readings, but she didn't have the ability to like tune in exactly to the names. She was kind of like just getting impressions. I'm seeing, I'm hearing. You know, you know that my wonderful friend Chuck used to come here and do the Native American drumming. And Chuck passed away from a, from a tragic accident um, that was weird, if anything. Um, he was working for his son-in-law, and his son-in-law runs an environmental cleanup company, and they have these amazing 20-ton machines that, that clean up whole sites of soil and such. And Chuck went down on a Sunday to help his son-in-law out, and he was bringing the, the machine uh, towards him, and something happened, and he got crushed to death. And it's very tragic. And this lady says, there's this guy on the other side, he seems kind of young. He, he got, uh, he, he got in, into an accident. She says, and I'm seeing, it seems like he, he crushed his chest. And it was a vehicle, but it wasn't an auto. Does anybody know? And I'm saying, oh my God, here comes Chuck, <laughs> right? And I'm getting teary-eyed. And when, when the truth hits me, my kundalini opens up all the time. And I get, well, you know, the kundalini opens up on you too. It's called the chills, except this is, wasn't cold. <laughs> you know, it's when it's not cold and something miraculous is happening, Ooh, you know, like that. And that happens to me an awful lot. I have an awful lot of amazing things happen to me. But, um, so she says, does anybody relate to this? I raise my hands. And then Chuck says, um, says, I need for you to, to understand that I did not suffer. That they took me out of my body before my body died. Somebody must have told his children that your father must have suffered for hours because he was crushed to death, right? But he came to me to say, tell them that I didn't suffer at all, that it was my time and they took me out of my body before the end came. And then he said, and I, I officiated his funeral, and then he said, oh, and I loved the funeral you gave. <laughs> He said, do you know where I was standing? And I really did know where he was standing because I felt him standing. And then Jean Katz was in the audience. And she's got a third eye open. And Jean kept saying, he's over here. And I said, I know, I know. So I turned to Chuck in the middle of the, the, ser the, the service that I was, the funeral service. And I had this book. Chuck was reading this book by Zachariah Sitchin about how we're the seed race of the aliens and, and whatever this was in this book, Chuck was going wacky about it. Chuck was a quantum physicist and he was an explorer. And he was, you know Chuck, he was a Native American church guy. And, and when he would come here and, and start our ceremonies off with those drums and do the four corners, which we're gonna do tonight. And it was always wonderful. And then I told a joke at the funeral because I brought the book because he drove, there was like 600 people in the audience and 
he must have gotten at least the 200 of them and he was driving them cra crazy, railing, you have to read this book, you have to read this book. And he really drove everybody crazy. And he talked to every single person, anybody would listen. He said, you gotta read this book, you gotta read this book. So I brought the book and I turned to Chuck and I said, I'm almost finished. <laughs> and everybody in the audience cracked up laughing because they all knew that he was driving them crazy. He was buying like 10 copies at a time and handing them out, stuff like that. And so through the medium, he said, oh, and by the way, that joke was really funny. Right? <laughs> and it was like having a conversation, you know, with your friend on the other side. We can do that all the time. But most of us don't have a medium's talent, although I understand that you can learn, but we don't have that, that ability. Hilda was able to feel and, and even to hear. And there are people that were always part of this class that were able to see. And all together, we put together, you know, the messages. And when Hilda brought us to the Hindu temple once a month for the Skanda Puja, she would give a message from Skanda. And it was always this amazing message that it was always, always as if she was saying it to you. You know how they say some people perform and you think that they're singing that song just to you or they're speaking up in front of the audience and you would swear that they're reading your mind because she knows the experience that you're going through and it's like she's fashioning the lesson for you in the audience. And we always felt that way about Hilda, that Hilda must have been reading our thoughts and you know she did. You know, she, she had those abilities to just read you like a book. Unfortunately for, for you, <laughs> because she was a spiritual surgeon, <laughs> she cut your ego up a bit. And, and that experience, um, everybody was waiting for somebody, to, you know, a Chuck sighting. All of his friends would call me and say, did you have a Chuck sighting? Have you had a Chuck sighting? And I don't know, because I'm, you know, I'm so busy, wrapped up into my own little world that I'm never sitting long enough to hear except when I'm meditating in the morning and when I meditate in the evening. And then I'm trying not to hear, I'm just trying to, to get into that space first. And that, that's what created this evening, that the two worlds are so close together and that you travel with your contingent and each one of you has a contingent. Some, some have Native Americans around them, they all have healers, you all who, who have been here have been around for a long time. And I want to say that probably most of you don't belong on this planet any longer. If you feel like this planet is the weirdest place uh, imaginable, it's because you're graduating. I mean, you still have to, you know, do the basics to, to get that diploma. You still have to pass the tests, right? But you're much closer than you think. All of you are much closer than you think. Um, so that was the, the first thing I wanted to share. That Chuck says yo <laughs> to everybody, all right? Because he was like that. He was really like that. And I posted what he said. They, they created a site for Chuck. His, his daughters created this site, and there's around 130 people, and they they tell stories and they put pictures about Chuck and, and tell stories about Chuck. And I wrote down exactly what happened. And it's no sooner that I posted, his daughter contacted me and she said, the tears are rolling down my eyes as I typed this. You don't know what you did. And it's true, I didn't know because I was cross with Chuck. You're, wasting, you're taking up my time. I knew you were standing there. I wanted to talk to my mother. <laughs> and Chuck, you know, he was the senior representative of the spirit up there, so he gets first dibs to come through. So, you know, I gave him, but then I realized that one of the doctors, somebody told the kids that your father must have suffered terribly. So he came down, he, he pushed everybody out of the way, and he came down to, to say that. And of course, you know, as soon as you start talking about him, he's here, as well as all those other people, and they're all on the other side, listening and, and sending their juice to you, you're never alone.
you are never alone. And you have a contingent around you that's amazing. Now, people that were around Hilda all know this. The, the senior representatives of Hilda, the people who were with her in her classes and got smacked around by her, and got purified by her and cleansed by her, and blessed mostly by her. Um, we all know this because we saw miracles happen every time that we went into that class. Hilda did things that opened the door of consciousness in your life. And she showed you that there are not three dimensions. There are many more that are simultaneously going on if you just had the eyes to see and the ears to hear. But like most of us, I need to be reminded at times. And fortunately, magic follows me around. And it's not magic, you can call it synchronicity. I'm sure it follows you around if you're paying attention too, because we all have these amazing stories. And when I get together with any of our crew here, and we start comparing stories, it's like, it's wonderful, because it's just uplifting, completely, you know, inspirational, these miracles. What I heard this week is that everybody has to step up their game a bit. You have to become larger, wilder, crazier, perhaps. You know, nobody remembers, after two generations, everybody's just dust in the wind, right? I mean, can you name the names of your great-grandparents? Their first names and maybe middle names and maybe what kind of work they did. In just a short order of time, people are forgotten. I mean, if you think about the first half of the 20th century, the famous people from that half, Teddy Roosevelt, or Ro the, the other Roosevelt, Franklin, or Eddie Cantor, or Rudolph Valentino, but for the most part, the only reason I know those names is because I'm old. Otherwise, Paul McCartney, isn't that the guy that's played with wings, right? Because ask, ask our sons, they don't know any of these names. Who's Georgie Jessel? You know, uh, Jimmy Durante. I mean, so we're all pretty much dust in the wind. So when, when Nelson Mandela said, we're, look, get big, get outrageous, make a big countenance, make a big splash, dress wild, do it, you know, don't be afraid. No one's gonna remember you anyway. Who cares? <laughs> Nobody cares if, if you gained weight, if you lost weight, I mean, you know, except maybe for your, your little contingent of your friends and say, oh, you look so wonderful, that kind of thing. But otherwise, dust in the wind. So do something great. Step your game up. Do something magnificent, all right? Because then they're all cheering for you. You go, you go, girl, you go. <laughs> about a song.
to accept our power, defend the light, and follow the golden way. Peace for each other. I wanted to do a, a little healing work, and Hilda always would call on, on Skanda uh, to help with that. And Rhonda and Skanda rhymes. So Rhonda, would you come up and sing your Skanda song? <laughs> she, she wrote me and she said, I really need to sing this song. And I said, you know, you called me at the last moment. Everybody wants to sing songs tonight. It's like we're filled up. She, so she said, okay, okay. And she wrote me back and she read my newsletter and I put in like chapter two of my book. It's like a long newsletter. You know, and it's mostly about, you know, serving. And she wrote me back, she says, now I have to do this song. You have to let me do it. So I wrote her back and I said, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> and then this morning I got up and I said, I wrote her and I said, you better have it prepared. <laughs> Sing, sing it for us. I have a very special relationship with Skanda because Skanda is who brought me to these meetings. And he brought me first to Carl Odelman, who brought me to Hilda and the meeting, who brought me to Skanda. Back to Skanda. So Skanda is the son of Shiva, the brother of Ganesh. And he's the supreme general in the Warriors of Light. And he's here to guide us, within and without, to the light and to our true selves. And so I was guided to write this song in honor of that. And for all of us to hear, me included, um, so here we go. Warriors of truth and love, warriors of Hear the voice of Skanda call to follow him this night. Oh, Skanda, 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 son of Shiva, brother of Ganesh, lead us on to victory, guide us on our quest. Skanda's veil is Jyoti, Goddess of the light, who leads us upwards ever to our true birthright. Oh, Skanda, 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 son of Shiva, brother of Ganesh, lead us on to victory, guide us on our quest. Guide, Skanda guides us. Whoops. Pardon me. Skanda guides us safely through the pitfalls of our mind. Through courage, truth, and mastery, our true self we shall find. Oh, Skanda, 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 son of Shiva, brother of Ganesh, lead 
us on to victory, guide us on our quest. So when you see a rainbow in the sky or on TV, just say his mantra three times, and with you he will be. Oh, Skan, everybody sing, and the Skan, the son of Shiva, brother of Ganesh, lead us on to victory, guide us on our quest. Now, I just was guided to write another one, and I don't know, I have like three different versions of it, <laughs> and there was something said tonight that he tried to make me choose which one, but I will just sing. This is the last one that just came to me today. The time has come to heed his call, to rise up to the light. For the age of God to come, we must take up his fight. Oh, Skanda, 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 son of Shiva, brother of Ganesh, lead us on to victory, guide us on our quest. Let's just do it two more times. Oh, Skanda, 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 son of Shiva, brother of Ganesh, lead us on to victory. Guide us on our quest. One more time. Oh, Skanda, 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 son of Shiva, brother of Ganesh, lead us on to victory. Guide us on our Ohms, ohms for the world, ohms for your loved ones, ohms for your body, ohms for your visions, right? But first, I'm going to have you stand up. We're going to do the four corners so that Chucky can do the four corners with us tonight. All right? So, basically, I don't know which way is which. That is south. Uh, wait, Native, who's Native American here? What, which way do we start? We start north or south? West. We start with west, okay? So if that's south, that's north. West. <laughs> West of Jersey. Okay. Chuck, you send it with us. Here we go. Send it out.
last one, send it to the heavens. Okay, here we go. Sai Baba, 30 years or so ago, Sakya Sai Baba said to us, you are God, live it, and do this mantra every day. You can do it with me if you like. I am God, I am not different from God. I am God, I am not different from God. I am the indivisible supreme absolute. I am Satchit Ananda. I am Satchit Ananda. Truth consciousness bliss. Truth consciousness bliss. Grief and anxiety can never affect me. Grief and anxiety can never affect me. I am ever content. I am ever content. Fear cannot enter me. Fear cannot enter me. I am God. I am not different from God. I am not different from God. And so Nisargadatta meditated upon that which his guru had told him many, many, many years ago. And in 12 years, even though he ate meat and smoked cigarettes and sold tobacco and lived on a, on a street with a sewer in Bombay, he meditated upon that and was fully, completely realized in the highest level of consciousness, Brahman consciousness, one with God, and lived in that truth. And if you ask Nisargadatta what life was like for him, he would say, what life? And they say, well, the life we live every day. And he says, what every day? I am God. I was never born, and I will never die. And you can read I Am That by Nisargadatta, it's his talks, and you can discover the reality that we are not the body, we are not the mind, we are not the individual lives we lead with our individual personalities, we are not the separation that ego commands us to follow with no authority, but we are. Consciousness, the infinite, universal consciousness that inhabits all beings everywhere throughout creation and beyond.
that they used to say to the masters when they'd come to her to teach her, because she didn't have teachers for the first 20 years of her spiritual journey. They'd come, the masters Hilarion, Count St. Germain, Katumi, Master El Morier, Serapis Bey, and all the others of the Great White Lodge, and many others besides them, St. Joan of Arc, and St. Teresa, and St. Francis, and she'd, after she'd get teachings from them, love, live, live in love, serve in love, be in love, she'd say, you are but waves upon the ocean. This is what she'd say to them. You are but waves upon the ocean. I want the ocean. When Sai Baba finally gave her liberation, just before that, she said, I saw a picture of you shattering to a thousand million pieces, Swami. She'd said that to Sai Baba. What does it mean? And he simply said, go beyond name, go beyond form. And she did. We are here to live God. We're not here for any other purpose. And from that perspective and consciousness and reality, to love each other. You want to see God? It's very easy. Turn to your neighbor and look in their eyes. You can do it right now. And see God. Because this is the truth. Living embodiments of the love we are. Living embodiments of God. You want to get there? It's very easy. Nettie, show us.
Close your eyes, back straight. As if there was a nose in the center of your chest, breathe into your heart center. On every exhale, breathe up your spine and out the top of your head. Let your body melt into the chair where you can't tell where the chair begins and your body ends. Hold firm and rise. Rise in love this evening. Take of this miracle. Take of this power. Take of this blessing. Every breath, a breath of light. Mother, open my heart.
deep, deep inside. Still your mind. No mind, no body.
Now from this sacred space, I want you to stand over our beloved planet Earth. And in your mind, outstretch your arms and send your love down to our Earth. Send it with your love. each person's hearts with your words and let your words be like music to their soul. We send a thank you out to all those that have connected with us this night, to all our beloveds on the other side, to all our great teachers on the other side. 
to the Holy Spirit that's in each and every one of us. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You have that candle, you can light it. Send a thank you out to the farthest part of this universe for all the blessings, for the grace that we've been receiving. Take this light into your heart and carry it with you from this day forward. Live tall. Put your loved ones in this prayer. Keep it going, keep it going. Right now you are.